Canon finally released a new version of the firmware for Canon R5, which is version 1.3. It has C-Log3, 120 and 1080, and it has a camera raw light new format of video recording. It might not sound like a big deal, but to me, I think it's a big of an update. C-Log3 adds more dynamic range and it's a format they use in the cinema line cameras which is pretty cool it's kind of like a free upgrade to cinema line cameras which gives a better pleasing look 120 and 1080 this one is funny but I've been asking for this so long since the camera came out they only had 120 in 4k it's a beautiful slow motion don't get me wrong but it's just so hard on my computer I never could edit it at all like I would have to create proxies and go from there it's just so hard and a lot of times clients don't even need 4K. It's good enough to have 1080. So that solves that problem. A lot of times you want to just shoot 1080, 120 frames per second, be able to edit right away and still have a nice picture. And if the client wants just a video for social media, for Instagram, for Facebook, you don't need 4K at all unless you want to crop in later in post. Now, Roll Light is another cool add-on because it saves space and it's good to have that option, especially in 8K video because the files were just gigantic. Also, as far as 120 and 1080, it's cool they added that because now you don't have to have a fast card to write on. You can just use regular SD cards and the camera will not overheat as well. All right, now let's break this down a little bit. What is C-Log3? What is C-Log1? What is C-Log2? They introduced C-Log1 in Canon R. It was an 8-bit and 10-bit format, if you guys know. 10-bit would only be allowed to be shoot using external recorders such as Ninja, but R5 does everything internally, which is beautiful. So now when they got C-Log1 10-bit internally on the R5, it allows us to have more dynamic range and you get more desaturated look. And then later in post, you can add all the colors. Therefore, you get better detailed information in shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now there's also C-Log2 and C-Log3. So C-Log2 and 3, they use it in their cinema camera lineup. So I've researched it and what I found out is a lot of people were complaining in some uh, instances for C-Log2 where uh, there was a lot of noise introduced, especially, especially in midtones and shadows. So C-Log3 is actually a sweet spot with less noise. From what I learned shooting on the R5 with C-Log3, as you guys could see on these videos, you get such a clean look. Oh my God, like it was so clean. It also looks like it's brighter when you shoot it. And then the C-Log1, it looks more dull. Like I always had that feeling. If I expose it the same way, C-Log1 is way more dull and then C-Log3 is like really soft, bright look. It almost looks like it's overexposed. I was shooting, I was like, no way, this is gonna be overexposed. But my histogram was fine, so I just kept shooting. And then when I transferred it to the computer, it all looked perfectly exposed. Oh my God, guys, take a look at this video. This is a perfect example. By the way, this is such a cool spot. It's here in Pompano Beach in Florida. The water is just such a turquoise color, it's so nice. We have this here on the left side of the video, very lit, harsh light on the cement. And then we have really dark area here where the fish, you guys see that huge fish? And on the right side, we have a beautiful turquoise water. So this introduces pretty much a lot of highlight shadows and midtones. I think this is a great test to test out dynamic range actually. And we can see here how much information we have. The highlights, which is a super bright spot, it's not overexposed. The midtones, beautifully lit, is so, such a good color. And the shadows, which is the dark part with the fish, it still has a lot of information. It's like such a good balance. 
And you guys, if you would see how I was shooting it actually, it looked so overexposed. I was like, no way this is gonna look good. But when I brought out the computer and start playing with the sliders, it's so easy. Also, I have basic LUTs from Canon and it's pretty easy to apply. So for the C-Log one, I literally just applied one of their C-Log one LUTs on top so I can color correct it. Same thing I did with the C-Log three. They have different versions, probably like 15 or 20 versions of C-Log three LUTs. Same thing for the one and you can play with them and see which one applies better for you and color correct your image and then go from there. Let's say if you want to color grade it, then you apply another LUT to color grade it. Also, when you color correct, don't forget not just to apply the LUT, but also fix your shadows and highlights and midtones and exposure and contrast and saturation and clarity and sharpness and curves. And you can keep going crazy. Don't forget to look at Lumetri scopes. That's the best tool to look at. Make sure it's not clipping the exposure. It's not clipping the blacks. It's pretty cool stuff. Now, as far as video sizes, it saves a lot of footage. 4K 120, a three second clip is one gig. Really? Same clip in 1080 is 350 megabytes. So it's a one third of a size. It's a lower codec, means it's gonna be so much easier on the computer and it plays back on my MacBooks just fine compared to the 4K 120, which was impossible. You have to create proxies. Now another huge benefit is that the camera will not overheat because this is just 1080 and you can record it on the fast SD cards opposed to where you had to record it on CF Express in 4K 120. Now as far as 8K RAW light video, it saves you about 30% of the memory. Shouldn't compare to the RAW, it's a little bit easier codec. So therefore you can save a little bit of space, still maintaining high quality video in 8K, which I'm probably never gonna shoot, but... By the way, most of these shots were shot on 3514 Sigma, 16 to 35 2.8, all the white shots you see in the video, and then the tight shots were shot on 85. Now, I've used ND filters on each of these lenses, but not 8514. So 8514, I went to shutter speeds like 1 over 800 and even more. So it's not... I'm breaking here the rules, but the image still looks so nice. Just guys, just take a look how clean this looks. Now these pelicans are more like pets. <laughs> I don't know, you can just come to them. You can you can pet one. They're, they're so cool. Like you can literally come so close and they are not gonna do anything to you. But I was able to even use my macro lens and get, it, get to them like this close to record an eye super close. And the camera was grabbing the autofocus so good. That's another good thing where they introduce C-Log 3 or C-Log 1 or any mode you shoot in Canon, the autofocus is just so good. And especially the eye animal autofocus, like that's crazy. That the, From whatever distance I noticed that the autofocus is just like spot on. Like I'll, the camera will see the bird before I'll see the bird and it will just get the focus instantly. That's pretty cool. And one last thing to update it, it was super easy. You can just download it on Canon's website. A software 1.3 there's a version for mac or there's a version for windows you just load it on your card and then from there on the camera menu you'll go to settings firmware update and it takes about a minute not even that and you are good to go they also have a pdf document with all the instructions but like i said it's super easy there is no way to mess it up don't forget to not turn off the camera in the middle of the update to not take out the battery you don't want to <sighs> All right, that was it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope it gave you some information and input on the new update. I think it's a big update because it's pretty much supercharged my camera all of a sudden. All of a sudden I have a format that cinema cameras have. That's, that's sick. And 1080, 120, come on, I've been asking for it forever. Now I can finally shoot it, save some memory space, don't worry about overheating. And for most of the time, you don't even need 4K. Well, that is it for me. What do you guys think? Leave some comments below. How do you like the video? Do you see any difference between 4K, 1080, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Peace.